Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 6, Monday, June 30th, 2003, Jesus. I want my children to have spiritual discipline. This means you practice your faith regardless of how you feel. There is far too much time spent on feelings today. Duty is more important. My children of the world think that their duties should be suspended if their feelings change. This is not the case, my children. On the contrary, you must complete your duties despite feelings of fatigue, boredom and restlessness. The enemy uses these feelings to persuade people that they should not serve their loved ones. The world encourages this and does not hold people responsible when they shirk their duties or become lax or lazy. Indeed, even in work, my children complain and think they should be given liberty. They begrudge doing their duty in every area of their lives. Only in their personal entertainment do they stop complaining, and that is being taken to excess. Children, this is not the way I intended for you to live. Your duty is holy and in it you will find your path to holiness. When you are unsure about what I want you to do at a given moment, look for your duty. Does it lie with your children, your job, your family, your home, your work? Everyone has a duty, and in it you will find the path to your salvation. I want you to have discipline now. Decide, through prayer and conversation with me, what spiritual practices you need to adopt. Then you must be disciplined about these practices. Only on rare occasions should you lift your obligation to complete them. Please don't think I do not understand the pressures in your life I am attempting, though, to realign your priorities and place them into an order that is more consistent with your decision to serve me. You must listen to me, and together we will accomplish this task. You will proceed more peacefully and purposefully afterwards. I am with you and will help you to obtain this spiritual discipline which will speed you in your conversion. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 6 Monday, June thirtieth, two 2003 Blessed Mother My children must understand that very quickly your duty becomes joyful. You have witnessed this, my little one, with your duties as a mother and wife. When you are serving Jesus in your day, the smallest, humblest task becomes an opportunity for love and the saving of souls. It does not matter what you are called upon to do. It does not matter one small bit. In this way, a street sweeper is as exalted as a captain of industry. And to us, your heavenly friends, the street sweeper might have a better opportunity to achieve great holiness. Please do not wish for worldly acclaim right now. Yes, you should be good at your job, do your best and be joyful about the gifts God has given you. But I want your purpose to be serving God and helping your brothers and sisters. It is through this course that you will become saints, my little ones, and this is what we want for you. You see that Jesus is concerned about his children doing their duty. Pay close attention now to your duties, both in the world and in the spiritual sense. Pray, pray and pray, children 
because through prayer, you will see God's path open up to you in a beautiful fashion. Do not begrudge Jesus your humble little tasks throughout the day. Offer them to him with joy and a light-giving heart. He will reward you more than you can imagine, and your spiritual life will take over, guiding your thoughts and actions in a remarkable way. This is where we are going with your conversion, dear ones. You will see how easy and joyful is your service to God when you proceed this way. Your mother is with you and is helping you in everything. Be at peace. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 6, Tuesday, July 1st, 2003, Jesus. My smallest children do not know me. In times past, much emphasis was placed on the religious formation of the young. In this way, all grew to adulthood with clearly formed ideas about who I was and why it was best to serve me. They were also warned about the dangers of drifting away from me and turning to the world for pleasure and gratification. Children are defenceless now. They do not have the knowledge necessary to protect themselves from the call of the world and the call to sin. They are tossed about by those who would like to see their souls lost. Because of this spiritual ignorance and lack of preparation, my children wander aimlessly. They are without a compass, so to speak, and feel an emptiness that they cannot fill. The effort to fill this emptiness often leads them to trouble and danger. Parents must do better. I realize that many of these parents themselves have not had the proper formation and I will take that into account when they are judged. That is why it is necessary for my chosen ones to evangelize. The good news must be shared with all souls. What is the message, my children? I want you to tell souls everywhere that Jesus loves them. It is very simple. I love them. I want them to be with me. I want to protect them and insulate them from the dangers of this current world. Man does not deserve the exorbitant mercy I am lavishing upon him. But I am all love and my heart aches with compassion for these souls who have been left for the world to rear and form. My dear chosen souls, you really do not know how filled with joy we are when we see a family providing their children with the proper formation. We give every assistance and will use these children to be spiritual leaders later. Your job is important to us. I cannot stress that enough. Parents, you must take your duty very seriously right now as we need this. Never feel concerned. You need only live a simple life and pray. Everything else will be accomplished by me with the help of my mother and the angels and saints. I need you now, chosen souls. We have loved each other in the past. Do not disappoint me. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 6, Tuesday, July 1st, 2003. Blessed Mother. Little children, hear my son how eager he is to help you and bring you back safely to him. Do not fear, please, if you have made mistakes. 
We are only concerned about today, and this must be your approach also. Be sorry for your sins and walk away from them. Often, the evil one will attempt to keep you tied to past sins by reminding you of them and trying to persuade you that sinners cannot be true chosen souls. How ridiculous a notion! Look to the Bible for proof. Jesus came for sinners. Jesus will return for sinners. And my little chosen souls will prepare the way for him. I am counting every one of you who receives this message as a chosen soul. What joy will be yours? Think about joy, dear little child. When did you last feel joy? Your mother will show you heavenly joy if you heed our messages now. Don't be afraid, my small ones. Holiness is a process, and it is mostly up to Jesus to move you through that process. In a special way, right now, you can let Jesus form you. We are going to take care of everything. You need only love Jesus and let him direct your life. Be like a small sparrow, living only in the moment, confident that God will provide everything needed for the next day, the next season, and the next year. Your mother blesses you. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 6 Wednesday, July 2, 2003 Jesus My children rely too often on the thoughts of others. Children, you must think for yourself. The opinions of others are often flawed and have a worldly origin. Of what use is that to you? I want you to spend your time quietly as much as possible. Do not discuss every aspect of your life. It is not necessary and often leaves you distracted and upset. Your energy is wasted in this way and there is that much less remaining for prayer. Focus your strength and energy on serving me in your day. Before you speak, ask yourself if what you are going to say is of value. Before you offer an opinion, be certain you have given this thought consideration. Do not lead others astray, as I am warning you not to be led astray. Silence is necessary now, as we have said. Useless conversations add to the constant din of noise that leaves the spirit no peace. You will not understand what I need from you, dear children, unless you are quiet and thoughtful. Also, this quietness encourages my spirit to rest within you, and you will feel that presence. You will then speak with authority and correctness. And you will begin to offer opinions and counsel that have value and direction, instead of merely adding to the noise of this present world. Be at peace now in all of your troubles. I want my children to move through their days with confidence, even if they are carrying crosses for me. The heavier the cross, dear ones, the closer I will be. Do not fear. You will not be left in the wilderness. I call my own to me, and my own know me. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 6 Wednesday, July 2nd, 2003 Blessed Mother you see that Jesus is leaving nothing to chance. He wishes to guide his children in an unusual way during this time. 
all has been foreseen, dear children. I want you to say no to anxiety and distress. My children can rest peacefully in my arms these days as Jesus fulfills his plan for the salvation of the world. How happy you will be to have participated. Jesus is granting you great graces by asking for your help. I know you will not disappoint him. All you need to do to serve him is be at peace and listen to his voice in prayer. Be still, little ones, and know that he is God. All else, all details, will flow naturally from that one directive. Do you hear the voice of your mother, little one? I am appealing to your heart and beg you to trust me and live my words. These are serious times, but I am with you and will quiet all of your fears. Be at peace now and spend your time with Jesus in your heart. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 6, Thursday, July 3rd, 2003, Jesus. Again today I speak to souls. My children, you will recognize me in your life when you begin to follow me. Look for me and my desires as you go through your day. View everything as an opportunity for holiness. View everything as an opportunity to be closer to me. Do not be short-tempered with your brothers and sisters in the world. They are also my children, and it hurts me when you judge them so harshly. I have given you many gifts. I will expect an accounting for them. You, my chosen children, are called to a higher level of holiness than others. You have everything you need to achieve the level I desire. This is not going to be difficult if you are heeding my words. Indeed, you will find your life will become simpler easier and more joyful as you begin to follow me. Your life is not intended to be complex. God would not have created a complex world destined to confuse his children. Your Father in heaven is not like that. Read the Bible, my children, and you will come to know your God. He is all love. He sees to everything for you. Life is intended to be simple, beautiful, and you are to be learning always. The modern world tries to persuade you to think that life is complex. Most issues are simple. For example, abortion is murder, dear ones. Do not be fooled. Children are your treasure, regardless of when your Heavenly Father decides to send them. That issue is not complex, and I need my children to be courageous in defending the lives of the unborn children of God. Your generation is suffering untold calamities because of this grave, grave sin. Be alert, my children, and I will instruct you in your role. But truly I say to you, all of heaven cries out against this crime. How long can your God remain silent in the face of these pleas? I am with you. I love you. I will remain with you in a special way and anything you are asked to do for me will be accompanied by such graces that it will be easy to accomplish. But you must remain close to me. 
It is only when you drift off and close your ears to me that your life becomes complex again. Be happy, dear ones. All of heaven stands ready to assist you. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 6, Thursday, July 3rd, 2003, Blessed Mother. I am one of the voices pleading with God to intervene for the protection of my unborn children. I cannot describe the grief the situation has caused me. Be strong, little children. You must represent Jesus in your world. This sin has occurred because there are so few representing my son. We told you that people must see Jesus looking out at them from your eyes. This is true. If there were enough people following my son, the crime of abortion would never have happened. There are not enough representatives of Christ in the world to properly combat this outrage. But that is changing, as I have said. The world is turning to God. In pain and despair, the world seeks relief. And God, in his all-encompassing love and mercy, is responding. No longer will God allow his children to be victimized. Be happy, my dear ones. God is changing your world, and his justice will ensure that the children of light be allowed to follow their God in the world he created. Your mother is with you and protects you. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 6 Friday, July 4th, 2003 Jesus I wish to draw souls out of the world. As the world lured them away from me, now I call them back. My sacred heart, which beats with love for my children, is crying out with love. Many of my children will heed the call of my heart and follow me. They will bring souls with them. This is the beginning of my renewal, and events will follow each other. The enemy is weakening as more souls return to the light. My children initially find it difficult to leave the emptiness of the world. Emptiness becomes a habit and the materialism that people use to feel the emptiness also becomes a habit. But I offer something so sparkling, so eternal and so pristine that the soul longs for it. I offer goodness and happiness. I offer peace and above all I offer love. My love is real. If you want to see examples of my love, children, before you make the decision to come back to me, look to my chosen souls. See how they love each other and sacrifice for each other. You will not find constant harsh words and recriminations between them. You will see them bearing with each other in patience and tolerance. My chosen souls are doing their duty. That is another way to recognize them. They work in the world. They care for their family members. They tell the truth. And when they make mistakes, they provide recompense. Look to the lives of my chosen souls for example. They often become bored and discouraged like my children still wandering, but they persevere and the troublesome feelings pass. Their souls are strengthened by their triumph over these temptations. 
my chosen souls have troubles just like others. But watch closely how they respond to their troubles. They help each other. They appeal to me, their God, and they accept their crosses. You will find goodness in the eyes of my chosen souls. Do you want that to be yours? Come back to me. The world offers you nothing. The world does not love you. Indeed, you will find only rejection and hatred in the world. Come back to me and begin to examine your inheritance, which is goodness, love and eternal security and joy. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 6, Friday, July 4th, 2003, Blessed Mother. Jesus calls out with such passion and love. Little ones, feel the love in his words. He is feeling so strongly the absence of so many souls wandering lost in the darkness of the world. I too ache for these souls. Be careful never to discard a soul for lost. Try, try and try to call them back. I realize that souls in trouble can be very hurtful to my children. I do not want that and will protect you if you appeal to me. Often, you should love them and pray for them, leaving them to Jesus. Remember that with many souls, your good wishes and prayers are enough to save their souls from perdition. So do not fear. Be at peace always in these situations and let your heavenly friends intervene. Your love can feel like a cross at these times, and so it is, dear children. Love can be a burden, but that creates strength in your soul. Remember always that Jesus has a plan. It is the best plan for you and your loved ones, and he will deal with souls who refuse his graces and follow the paths of darkness. You need only be responsible for your own soul and the formation of any children under your care. If your children choose darkness, pray for them and appeal to me. I will help you with your children. That is my promise to you. As a mother, I understand a mother's great love and concern. Also, if you feel you have made mistakes with your children, appeal to me. I will intercede for you before the heavenly throne of our Father and provide them with mitigation for your faults. In this way, the children will not reap the whole harvest of your flaws. Do you see how we love you? Do you see how we compensate for your mistakes and flaws? We are all love, little ones. We are all acceptance of your humanity and of the difficulties you are having in this world filled with distortions. There is only one way now, and it is our way. Come back to the sacred heart of my son. You will find only love, acceptance and joy. Your mother remains with you and is ever ready to assist you. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 6 Saturday, July 5th, 2003 Jesus I would speak to souls today about the value of obedience. My chosen ones believe they should understand everything. This is not always possible. 
There are times when you must obey me without understanding why I have chosen to ask a thing of you. I realize this is difficult for you, and that is why I am asking you to practice this virtue. There will come a time when I ask you for obedience, and I will need an immediate response. I cannot have my chosen ones wasting time questioning why I am asking them to complete a task. So now we will practice obedience, dear ones. In your everyday life, I want you to always consider what it is that Jesus is asking from you. You will know in your heart what my desires require. Please begin this today and practice obeying immediately, even though perhaps you do not recognize the merit of the request. How often you will say later, I see now why my Jesus asked me to do that task. Children, in this way you will become free. Your liberty will be complete and your slavery to this world will end. I need obedient servants. Again, I tell you, study the Bible. Read the Gospels. My children in the past did not always understand why they were asked to do things. Even my mother, Mary, did not always understand the value of her actions. Saint Joseph, my foster father, is a beautiful example of the reverence a soul must possess for the divine will in his life. Ask Saint Joseph to help you with obedience and the trust necessary to obey. He will hear you and you will progress. This is a time now for heeding my messages, children. I say this with all solemnity. Be advised. Your God wishes to save you through your obedience. Thoughts on Spirituality, Chapter 6 Saturday, July 5th, 2003 Blessed Mother How well my children are listening in these days. Your mother is pleased with you, dear ones, because you are beginning to heed the words of my son. We are helping you and stand by to help you still more. How the soul groans with these initial efforts. I know you feel the pains of growth and I know this is often difficult. Be brave little souls. Believe us when we say that your difficulties will be short-lived. And if you could see the banquet that awaits you, there would be no hesitation. We must ransom as many souls as possible now. Think of your sufferings as nothing. Remember, it is likely that a soul suffered for your conversion. At the very least, gaze on your crucifix and see the cost of your final redemption. Jesus counts it as nothing. Willingly, he would do it again for you. He loves you, dear little ones. Jesus intends to reward you more than you can imagine for your obedience. And practicing will make it seem effortless. It becomes a habit and you give it very little thought after that. Be at peace always and show others how happy is this service to Christ.